A few months back, I saw this sensor watch project on crowd supply. It's a pretty cool idea. They've made a replacement PCB for the Casio F91W wristwatch that allows you to plug in a whole bunch of daughter boards on these flexible PCBs that add functionality. In this case, I got a temperature sensor. You can see it here. Those two little components there make up a uh, thermistor of some kind. The board itself was really nicely laid out, had lots of test pads and connections. And then on the back, they even were nice enough to label each pin and its uh, definition. And I think those are pin listings for programming. It's very neighborly. So I popped open my Casio F91W, removed the rubber gasket, and pulled out the watch module. These things are pretty fiddly to get apart, but I managed to get into it. Now you gotta use the battery from your original watch in the new one, and, and part of that is this clip here that you gotta take out. This part is how the battery actually connects to the PCB, so it's pretty important. Once I get the old PCB out, you can take a look at it. Because Casio has integrated so much of the watch's design into the IC, you can see that there's basically no components on the Casio PCB. It's all contained in that blob in the center. Not so on the sensor watch where there's lots of onboard components, and I don't see any crystal oscillator can on the sensor watch though, so its real-time clock must use uh, um, much smaller components, I guess. Visible here also is the sensor watch's two-color LED and the ZIF connector for the sensor board. There's also this little pin on the back that you'll need to solder on the sensor watch PCB if you want speaker noises. After a quick perusal of the instructions, I flipped open the ZIF connector and did my best to fit that little daughter board in there. It took me a few minutes. It's, uh, it's small and fiddly, but once you get it in place, it's pretty easy. You just slide that latch down over top of the edge connector and there you have it. Now we just got to get it back in the watch. So we take the Casio's LCD frame and we pop the sensor watch PCB into it and using that battery clip we got off the Casio, we can clip on that metal backing and it powers right up. Before we put this back in the watch, I found it was a good idea to make sure the buttons were completely extended so they didn't snag on the module when you tried to get it back in the frame. Even so, I still had to use my tweezers to get it in there, but once it was in, it seemed pretty good. Now I just gotta put the gasket back, maybe retain some of that water resistance, hopefully. Put the back cover on, button it up, and there you go. I've only had the sensor watch for about a week, but I've been pretty impressed with the functionality that this new PCB brings to the watch. The firmware for this watch board is called Movement, and this particular PCB shipped with a version of Movement called Standard. It comes with a number of different built-in clock faces, Simple Clock, World Clock, Sunrise, Sunset, Moon Phase, and Temperature. However, noticeably absent are any kind of standard chronometer features like stopwatch or countdown timer, or even an alarm. I guess I didn't really use this watch for those features to begin with, but it does seem funny that I have a tiny Cortex M0 Plus processor on my wrist, and it's not going to let me time my eggs. And while the other features like sunrise, sunset, and moon phase are kind of neat, they don't really serve any immediate purpose to me. There is one feature of this firmware that I think is really fun. You remember how we noticed that the PCB had both a red and green LED? Well, those are the backlight for the watch. And you can actually change the intensity of both LED individually. So by adjusting the intensity of the red or green LED, you can change the color of your backlight. I've seen a lot of modifications where people change the backlight LED or put a colored gel and the crystal for the watch face to change the color of the LCD. I think they do it to preserve night vision or something like that. But the sensor watch makes that a user configurable setting changeable from the watch. At night when you press the backlight button, you can have any color you want from red to green and in between. 
The temperature sensor also works pretty well, and it's fairly sensitive. I don't know if it's accurate, it's hard to say. The temperature sensor itself is housed within the hermetically sealed watch case, so although I'm sure it picks up the temperature on my wrist, there's probably quite a bit of delay and heat dispersal, so I don't know how useful it is, but it is cool to be able to see my temperature on my watch. There's other versions of the firmware that include different kinds of features. They seem to be broken up into intended purposes, with names like the athlete or the backpacker. There's some cool watch faces apparently, like pulsometer, temperature log, blinky light. To get those on my watch, I'd have to load this version of the firmware, and I'm not quite sure how to do that, but luckily, all of these watch faces are testable online through an emulator that runs in browser, which is pretty cool. And just by nature of that expansion slot on the PCB, you could make your own sensor board and write your own firmware to support it. They've made that all possible, which I think is really cool. I want to dive in and check it out. I really like this idea of just a simple drop-in PCB replacement. You know, just leverage the ubiquity and accessibility of this watch and put your own stuff in it. And suddenly you have a cheap housing for whatever kind of watch you want. But would you look at the time? That's all I got for now. Should probably get going. So long.